My name's Anne Butler and I'm the minister here at uh, Newland Port Elliot Uniting Church. I'd like to welcome you here today. We're going to enjoy some of Grace's favourite music. We have already begun. It's good that we can meet together to celebrate her life. It seems appropriate that we're going to begin by singing Amazing Grace, because indeed she was. Please be seated. Friends, we have come together because we loved Grace, Grace Hilton Reed. Her long life is greater than the length of our memories. She's been a point of constancy in our lives, sister, mother, Grandmother, friend, that life has now come to an end and we come to mourn her death, to celebrate her life and to comfort those who mourn. We come believing that all human life has infinite worth, that the truth, integrity and hopefulness which resides in each life lives on. We come believing that Grace's life, which we celebrate and mourn today, is joined to the eternal continuum of human endeavour, stretching from the dawn of humanity and on to the end of time. Grace's life was long, rich and generously lived. None of what she gave us is lost and our lives are more beautiful and complete for all she gifted to us. Let us reflect upon words of comfort and hope from the scriptures and from poetry. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. 
His mercies never come to an end. Set your troubled hearts at rest, says Jesus. Trust in God always. Trust also in me. In hope, in faith, in the gratitude of memory, let us remember. Loving God, we ask now that you bring forgiveness to anything in our lives that wasn't right with grace for the times when we have let her down. We also ask your forgiveness upon anything we did that we may stand forgiven as loved children. Loving God, do not let our grief be so great that it turns us away from you. Open your arms wide for us and for grace. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Rob is going to bring us the 23rd Psalm. Third psalm is the divine shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overfloweth. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Grace's sons, Gavin and Peter, are now going to tell us about her life. Firstly, on, on behalf of the family, um, I really um, appreciate what a great turnout we've got here tonight, today, sorry. Um, Mum would be overwhelmed with the numbers um, and she'd be uh, a little embarrassed as well. Um, I just want to give a special shout out to those watching on the live stream, um, especially Heather, Barb, Anne and Betty. Well, some of those ladies have actually known Mum or been friends with her for over 70 years. So, and obviously they couldn't make it here today. Um, some of this first section I've stolen from Nathan, um, who did a project on his nana uh, at school. So, thank you, Nathan. Um, Grace Hilton Partridge was born on the 30th of December 1935 in Sydney. She was the first and only child of Kingsley Skipper Partridge and Gertrude Gertie Partridge. The skipper worked as a patrol padre, a travelling minister out of Oakbank, Tennant Creek and Alice Springs for the Australian Inland Mission. Skipper started working for the AIM after meeting John Flynn at university. He moved from, town to, from the towns to the stations, spreading the word, uh, but also worked on the stations, uh, getting to know the people. Religion with guts is what he called it. Um, Mum joined her parents on the road as a four and a half month old baby and she stayed with them until she was six. Travelling the outback in the 1930s would not have been easy. No bitumen roads back in those days. 
No graded roads as we know, mainly just horse tracks between the stations. They also didn't have the dual cab utes that Gav has, with the air conditioning, independent suspension, GPS systems and all the creature comforts, and no RAA. If the car broke down, Skipper had to fix it. I read a new newspaper article that Mum collected um, about her father. He said he'd travelled half a million miles in his time with the AIM. He wore out six cars um, and had another catch on fire. He was proud of what he was able to achieve in 40 years working with John Flynn. Um, as it turned out, Skipper conducted the funeral service of John Flynn's funeral service. Mum was so proud of what her dad and mum achieved in the outback, she described Skipper as her hero. Mum continued to keep those memories alive um, throughout her life, often travelling back to Alice with Gavin and I and a number of our grandkids. Um, as I said before, it wasn't that easy uh, on the road as a toddler, but mum loved it, meeting and playing with the kids at each of the different stations. After turning six, mum started school at Udnadatta Primary School. She spent one year there before moving to the Alice Springs Primary School. Mum met her best friend Anne at school and she liked nothing better than riding her bike with her friends. Her favourite subject was maths. There were no high schools in the Alice at that time, so Mum went off to Presbyterian Girls College, now Seymour College, in Adelaide to board. She made many new friends, um, Heather, Barb, Lynette, or Nettles they used to call her, Margie, Rosie, Pat and Joan. And many of those friendships have lasted over 70 years. Her favourite memory was riding back to the Alice on the GAN to see her parents in the school holidays. She occasionally flew back to the Alice, but she preferred the train because she loved the scenery. She also took some of her friends back from PGC on the GAN for the holidays in the Alice with her parents. During her school days, Mum thought she'd become a banker. She wanted to work with money and use her favourite subject, maths. After finishing schooling, she actually spent a year working on a station in the Northern Territory with Skipper and Gertie, considering her future. Her school friends, Barb, Lynette, Margie, Rosie, Pat and Joan, committed to go nursing. And she completed her studies in 1958. She decided to come to Victor Harbour to work with her cousin Helen and Uncle Sel Nidra's vet practice. When word got around in Victor that there was a new nurse in town, Mum was asked to work at the Victor Harbour Hospital as they were short on nursing staff. Her next dream was to marry a farmer, but that's another story. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. Our dad, Ron, first spotted mum in this church. Dad, with mum, with his mum, to, the, to the, this side of the church, and Skipper, Gertie, and mum dressed in a red hat on that side of the church. Dad was understood to have said to his mum, who's that good sort in the red hat? In September of 1960, Dad was admitted to Victor Harbour Hospital, concussed after playing what turned out to be his last game of football for the Victor Harbour Footy Club. As Dad told the story, I was woken by a nurse standing at the foot of the bed, arms folded, and she said, put your teeth in, Mr Reid, you look terrible. <laughs> Mum's version was slightly different. She said, well, I was a sister, not a nurse, and I'm not sure that I had my arms folded. Love at first sight, definitely for Dad, not so sure about Mum. Dad was discharged from hospital. Uh, obviously his concussion was quite bad because he had to convalesce uh, at a friend's house at Mount Compass for a few days. And the major topic of conversation was how was he gonna reconnect with this lovely nurse 
well, actually sister, that he'd met at the hospital. Um, and his mates got their heads together and they came up with this not so cunning plan. And that was that dad would call the hospital um, and he would say that he had left his underpants there, hence the need to go into the hospital. Now, regardless of what you think of this pretty crazy story, it actually worked, um, believe it or not. Because mum and dad then started courting um, a few months, for a few months uh, before mum had to go overseas uh, on a previously um, organised um, round the world trip actually for six months. Uh, and you can imagine um, that saying that absence makes the heart grow fonder. And I remember dad saying it was the longest six months of his entire life. But clearly mum felt the same because um, they were engaged soon after. So mum and dad were married in this church on the 7th of April 1962 and it was uh, mum's dad, a skipper, who, who conducted the service. They didn't waste any time. Peter was born uh, in September of 1963 and myself uh, in April of 1965. By then, we were living on our dairy farm, Donnybrook, um, just out at Lower Inman Valley. And mum and dad spent the next 15 years working the farm. Dad was always looking to innovate, improve how things were done, but mum was always beside him, encouraging, supporting him, and bringing up two amazing kids. <laughs> Growing up on the farm for Peter and I was the best. Mum and dad always said the farm was their job, not ours. And whilst we had some farm jobs to do, we were free to be kids, to play sport, ride our motorbikes with our neighbours, the Panozzo kids, frequent sleepovers on the farm with our friends, annual holidays, annual trips to the Royal Adelaide show, the list goes on. I'm sure we were the envy of all the farming kids. Mum and Dad were always hands-on as well. They drove us and most of the cricket team to matches. Mum was a scorer, Dad was coached. They took us to footy on Saturdays and then they drove to Adelaide every Sunday for junior footy at Sturt and for Peter, that extended until he was old enough to drive himself. Life was no doubt busy for mum and dad when we were younger. They played sport as well. Mum played badminton. She was a good golfer, winning the B grade championship at Victor Harbour Golf Club. Uh, and she also got a hole in one, something that dad never got to achieve. But they always had time for themselves. Weekends away without us, golfing trips with friends, parties, the annual cricket uh, Christmas challenge with the Gorge family, we actually got included for that, and much, much more. In 1979, Dad's retirement came quickly due to ill health. That meant selling the farm and moving into Victor Harbour. Another one of Mum's qualities was that she was so easy to get along with. She won the Mary Douglas Prize at Seymour College for being easy to live with. And I should point out that she was actually a boarder. Those qualities were certainly needed as Dad purchased our new house on Cudmore Road and Mum hadn't even seen the house. Dad had his, uh, his share of courage, but can you imagine that scenario? Dad knew Mum so well and she knew that he would, she would be very happy there and she was. At the end of 1982, with Peter at uni and me finishing my year, year 12 studies, Mum and Dad took off. Their retirement was spent travelling all around Australia in a caravan, sometimes with friends, sometimes without. They took up bowls, spent time fishing and having the time of their lives for nearly 20 years. Their favourite caravanning spot was Iluka on the New South Wales coast, coast, where they would meet friends, go fishing, golfing, bowling and no doubt they indulged in the odd glass or two. In late, 1970, sorry, in late 1997, Dad was diagnosed with cancer and within five weeks he was gone. Mum and Dad were married for 36 years. Mum described Dad as the love of her life. They were inseparable. Mum was understandably shattered and went through some dark times. Mum's friendship groups rallied around her while she immersed herself in travel, bowls and her beloved grandkids. Mum travelled extensively with Victor Harbour tours all around Australia again 
Canada, Alaska, Greece, Turkey. Uh, she did a Rhine River cruise, just to name a few. Travelling with friends, making new friends. Hearing stories about their travels, it sounded like Mum had a blast. Mum continued her, to excel at bowls, her career and service at the Encounter Bay Bowls Club extended 40 years and is a life member. Alongside Mum's schoolmates, Bowles friends became her new besties. Mum's highlights included a state triples title with Judy Sweeney and Shelley Norman, a state, bear, a state pairs title, champion of champion fours, and then in one year she won the singles, the pairs, the triples and the fours um, at the Encounter Bay Bowls Club. And we called that the Grand Slam. <laughs> but then the next year she did it again, except she went one better. She went singles, pairs, triples, fours and mixed pairs. So that's two Grand Slams, we reckon. Mum adored her grandkids. She was hands-on and a critical part of their lives. In the early days, that was sleepovers at Nana's, although we found out a few years later that having Nathan and Mitchell at the same time was a bit much but she never said anything, and I can understand why. <laughs> Spoiling her grandkids at every opportunity, birthday celebrations, Mother's Day, grandparents' days at school, opening Christmas presents on Christmas Day. The ritual of Sunday night phone calls in our house to the chorus, that'll be your mum, every Sunday night since mum and dad started travelling uh, in 1983. That's over 40 years of continuous calls on a Sunday night to Pete and myself. To Nathan, Mitchell, Jasmine, William, Harrison and Emma, Nana has given you some lifelong memories and cherish them forever. In discussing today's service, we chatted about Mum's Bowles achievements and the medals that you see on her coffin today. As Mum didn't like braggers, she was originally reluctant to put her medals on display. Mum finally agreed that they could be displayed, in her words, to show people what you can achieve if you put your mind to it. A great message for all. Mum was very proud of her bowls career. We discussed Mum's favourite music choices for the service today as well. Um, and that's where it came up that she also liked, liked Queen, in particular Bohemian Rhapsody. But she said, you can't play that because all of my friends will think I've gone bonkers. <laughs> well, clearly <laughs> we did play it and she hasn't gone bonkers. I asked her, what's your favourite song? And she said, it's Amazing Grace. And I said, I did not know that. Um, she said, well, I've never really said that because I, I couldn't because it's going to put me in the limelight and, and it, it's, you can say it's a song about me and I, I don't want to be in the limelight. So, that's why I've never declared that as my favourite song. It's like, I, I didn't know. Um, and she said, that's why you can't, you can't use it in today's service, because I, I don't like braggers, and that's just how it is. And I said, oh, Mum, you do realise that you are the sole reason people are going to be here today, <laughs> and you're sort of kind of going to be in the limelight, whether you like it or not. And she said, with a smile on her face, actually, that's a good point. <laughs> You can use it, is, is where we landed. Our mum had an amazing life. She was an amazing daughter. She was an amazing cousin. She was an amazing wife. An amazing mum. An amazing mother-in-law. An amazing nana. And an amazing friend. Amazing Grace. Thank you. We have some photographs and some music to uh, further reflect on the wonderful times that we've experienced with Grace. Pipes, the pipes, 
fill it up with only two And when I hurt Hurting runs off my shoulders How can I hurt when holding you? Warm Touching warm Reaching out Touching me Did you see that wonderful smile? It never changed. Would you join me in prayer? Loving God, we thank you for Grace's life, for all that she has been to those who knew and loved her. We thank you for her early life, in the outback, playing with the kids, we thank you for her school days, Udna Datta, Alice Springs, Seymour. We give you thanks for her working life as a nurse, even a veterinary nurse, and midwife to cows. We give you thanks for her family life, for Ron, for the boys and for their partners and children. We give you thanks for Grace's love for her church. The sight of much of the important things of her life and it is fitting that she is here today to begin her final journey. We give you thanks for her sporting life, for her dedication to improvement and love of good times with friends. We give you thanks that she loved meeting famous people, getting their autographs. Now she's lining up for yours. We pray for those who love and mourn grace. May their present sorrow be transformed by hope and may joy and gratitude mark their memory of her. We pray for all people known to us who are grieving and those who are sick, especially those facing their final illness. May they be conscious of your presence May we be their skillful and loving friends. We pray for ourselves, confronted by our mortality. May we not despair, but cherish the days left to us as a gift, to be filled with love and friendship, sharing and justice-making. We ask these things in the name of Jesus, who even the grave could not hold. Amen. I ask now if you can, would you please stand?
loving God, we commit our friend Grace into your loving care. Now that she has finished with her mortal body, may she be reclothed by you in that amazing grace that you surround us with. May she ever be in your presence, one of your chosen. We have commended grace into the care of God. We now commit her body to the elements, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in sure and certain hope of the future of the life of love prepared for each one of us. We can confidently hand grace to you O oh, loving God. We say, how great thou art, another thing that meant a great deal to grace.
come back to that other place of worship, the encounter by Bowles Club. <laughs> and they join with the family and all those who love grace to tell the wonderful stories. And we share it here now that she is gone. It has been an honour to do this for grace today. And now, may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit keep your hearts and minds today and forevermore. Amen.